All right, hey guys, welcome back to Built by Design. I'm Nate the Intern, and this is my friend Ian again, here to show us some frame generator this time. So robot frames are one of the most crucial components during your FRC season. They're one of the things that people take the most time to build, and also one of the things they take the most time to design. Ian here is going to show you how you can turn that three-dimensional wireframe that you did in the last video into a functioning robot frame very, very quickly. Ian, let's see what you got. Okay, so we'll start right where we left off. Okay, so this time we're going to be taking the layout we made last time and making a frame out of it. As you can see, we already have all of the edges and that we need to make the members using Frame Generator. But first we actually have to create the profile of the tube we want to use. So we'll create a new part and start drawing the profile. All right, so I think though that it's important to remember that once you've done this once, you can use that same, pro same frame profile again and again. Yeah, and that's really helpful. So it, it is nice that you don't have to do this every time. As you can see, I'm using sketch constraints to constrain it to the origin so that it is centered about it. That way, when I, it, it actually makes the process of making it a custom frame, custom frame profile easier. So you're just using some nice eighth inch square tubing? Yeah. All right. It, it should be strong enough for pretty much any frame application, if not stronger. I'm calling the extrude length length. That way I I can use it later easily. Otherwise, it's just hard to remember what I called it. So now what I'm doing is I'm making sure I have a custom library available for read and write. As you can see, I already have one just because I've already set it up. But if you were doing this for the first time, you'd go down and hit create new library, give it a name you like, and the file name will be the same. It's really easy to set up. And again, you only need to do this part once. All right. So from here, I'm actually going to go into the Manage tab and publish it as um, a structural shape. That way it knows how to use it as a custom frame profile. and I have to save the document first so that it knows where to reference. And then I select that it is a square or rectangular tube and it actually has both of these two options already selected so I don't need to change anything. All I need to do is come in here and tell it that the length um, the length parameter is the one it needs to change when it adjusts the size to the frame number. So from there I can just hit publish now. That message box just tells me that it's keeping a log and this I can usually just bomb through it. It has all of the information already set up. I have to switch base length over to a key column but that's really simple. And then I just have to give it a name which is also fairly simple. And from there I can just hit publish. Alright, so now you've published your frame profile, um, so are you, now you're going to go back to your layout sketch? Yeah, actually I'm going to create a new assembly and place the layout sketch in yeah. that assembly because right. it's at the assembly level that you use the frame generator. Right, and all the design acceleration tools actually. So. Exactly. So. I only really need one so I can just <laughs> escape out of that and just go to design and open up the frame generator after saving the document, of course. So here I actually have to select the custom frame profile I made so it's in the unnamed standard and the rest of it's pretty easy. I set the material to aluminum 6061 since that's what it's going to be made out of. That way, when I actually go in to look at it, it has all the right weight, pro weight properties and material properties. And then now I can just start selecting the edges that I want to create frames on. 
And so it's just, it's basically that easy, huh? You just come in here, click on them, and they'll become frame parts. Yeah, exactly. It's, it is really easy. So I think it's important to note that when you drew your two-dimensional sketch, though, you had this in mind so that um, you're having it put the frame pieces on the center of those lines. Yeah. And that if you don't draw out your sketch properly dimensioned in to have the frame members applied in that way, you also can click left or right to, say, apply them on the left side, right side of the line, and whatnot. Yeah, so it, it is important, especially in FIRST Robotics, when you have such stringent size limitations. And you may be noticing that I'm not adding frame members to the angled supports for the mast, and that's because I found that it's generally a good idea to do it in sections when you have um, members at odd angles like that, otherwise it can cause issues for the ones that are at actually right angles. So just rotating around to make sure I have all of them, and then from there I can just hit apply. Give it a name that's descriptive of what it is. And That was very easy. Yeah, it's, it's really an amazing tool. This is one of my favorite parts of all of Inventor. Really fast. And then it automatically names all of the parts. The names aren't very descriptive, but they'll do. And then we see frame members start popping up on the screen. Yeah, it, it takes a little while for your computer to process them, but it isn't too much of a challenge. There they are. Yep, and then I'll go back to insert frame and add the angled support members. Alright, so now though I'm seeing a lot of corners that are open. How are we going to solve that problem? Yeah, so there's actually a tool made for that, though first I'm actually going to turn off the layout sketch since I don't need to see that anymore. But, yeah, as you can see, some of the corners flip into each other. It, if you were actually building a robot, unless you can make beams go through walls, I guess you couldn't build this frame yet. So what you can actually do is use the Trim ex slash Extend tool to adjust the length of the members so that they are flush with each other. So you're going through, you're selecting a lot of beams right now. Yeah, it doesn't matter how many you select. You okay. just have to make sure that they're all going to hit the same face. So then, after hitting the continue, I choose the face that I want to cut them off at, hit apply, and it then the frame generator just goes through and cuts them all off at that face. Wow, that was fast. So now you're going to do this a couple more times, right? Let's see if we can speed this up and get to the next part. Okay, so we finished trimming all of the edges that we want to length. So now, what if we want to miter some edges? Well, act like at the top of the ramp mounts. Well, actually, there's a tool for that, too. You can just select the two members that you want to miter together, hit OK, and then it automatically does it. Or hit Apply, and you can continue to use the tool. Yeah. And so then I'll just finish doing that on all four of these corners. Wow, that was really fast. I, I'm pretty impressed. Not many teams are going to be able to create frames quite as fast as Ian did just here because he already did all the design work. But I have to say the one really nice thing about this is that if he goes back in there and were to tweak his wire model, it would the frame will adapt. So this is a really great example of being able to create a solid final design that's still relatively fluid. Uh, Ian, I'm really impressed. Thank yeah, you. Of course. All right. Till next time, I'm Nate the Intern, and this is Ian from Build by Design. Good luck out there.